So I just landed in Warwick, Rhode Island to pick up a very special car. It'll be my first time owning a brand new BMW fresh off the lot. It's a new generation model. I'll be one of the very first people to own one of these cars so I can make content for you guys. I'm just excited. I'm gonna head over to BMW Warwick and then we'll talk when we get there. So I pretty much made it to BMW of Warwick, but I believe their building is being like remodeled for whatever reason. So the car is being held here at Mini Cooper. So I'm gonna look for Vito, which is my representative, and see if he can show us where the car's at. I was walking around the parking lot, this very first car that got my attention. This is the G82 M4 CSL. Extremely rare, extremely aggressive, and I believe it's for sale too. So if you guys are interested, hit up these guys at BMW of Warwick. Honestly, I probably prefer the M3 over the M4, but I know some of you guys like the two-door setup. Probably my favorite thing about this car is the taillights. Exclusive to this model and look absolutely wild. Little small touches like the, you know, the outline in red for the M4 CSL. You got the anniversary badge as well. You got these matte or satin black wheels. Holy crap, they do look really nice though, but I can only imagine what the maintenance is on something like this. You got the red accents here on the side skirt as well. M4 on the side and grill. As you guys can see around the massive kidney grills, you have the red accents there as well. A very aggressive carbon fiber front lip. And probably the one thing that stands out the most right here is the exposed carbon with the red accents for the indentations. What do you guys think of this car? Aggressive? Good looking? Let me know. That's the real MVP right there, Mr. Vito. Appreciate you, brother. What's up, my brother? <laughs> so that gentleman you guys briefly saw, that's Vito, the same representative that sold me the pure metal silver last time I was here. Vito is a guy that I've talked to like every single week since I bought the car. He's so cool. But he's one hell of a guy and he made it possible to get this car, which a ton of people wanted to get here and they only have one available. At the finance office, I'm making it official. The excitement is absolutely killing me. I got what, like two initials and a signature. And the car is mine, and I'll show you guys exactly what I got. Yeah, let's make it official. That's it, it's official. So I am standing right in front of my soon to be brand new car. And despite all the controversial stuff you see online about this car, the looks, the design, the color, it looks so much better in person. And I promise you that it is not a biased thing. I would be totally honest with you guys. It pops, it looks good. Let me show you. 2023 BMW G87 M2. Completely redesigned with the paint color being Zephyr Blue. I believe that's how you pronounce it. A color that got a lot of controversy. And Vito here at BMW Warwick told me that, trust me, you'll see it in person and you'll change your mind. And I think he was right. You know, I gotta show you guys what's underneath the hood. Just like the M3 and M4, it's rocking the S58 engine. Three liter, twin turbocharged inline six. And while it's basically the same engine setup as those cars, it's detuned and makes slightly less power. 453 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. And here's what the car sounds like with the valves open. Let's also quickly talk about the color. It's been one of the most controversial things about this car, to the point that people said they would go with any other color but this one. Listen, I've now seen the car in person and I think the color looks amazing. It's such an exotic, pure color. No flakes, no metallics, just a straight blue that changes its hue throughout the day. And while it's not my number one choice, I'm still pretty happy with it. You got the really nice wheels in gloss black. It really contrasts very well with that Zenfer blue. 20 inch rear. 19 inch front which i believe is the same or similar setup as the g80 and g82 m3 and m4 the car has the shadow line package of course so you got the black kidney grills and all the little small inserts for like the ducks here and the bottom portion of the bumper is gloss black and you get the anniversary badge which is super common nowadays i don't think they're going to offer this much longer but i think that with the zenfer blue it just kind of flows pretty well the colors match and we also have the red calipers, which stand out really well with the black. And I think just the combo between the blue, the red, and the black is pretty sweet. I'm not gonna bore you guys too much with the technical stuff of this car. There's like a million 
reviews from journalists out there, but I do want to show you guys the interior, which is probably the best part about this car, at least my favorite. You guys are not ready for this. You're not ready. Peep the interior, guys. What stands out? The carbon bucket seats, which are absolutely <laughs> insane. You got the exposed carbon fiber weave there. The front, nice padded leather with, I think it's Alcantara here on the side, bolsters. This one's optioned out with the M color, so you got the red, the darker blue, the light blue there. Six speed manual, definitely another big come up with this car. A 2023 M car with a six speed manual is just beautiful, especially an M2. Of course, you got the M steering wheel with the M color stitched there. You got the massive dual display setup right here. They kind of look out of place when you see them in pictures and videos online, but in person, it's definitely a lot more fluid and it fits the build. It looks super modern. Here's a far angle of what the interior looks like. Here's what the door panels look like. You got these M colors right here as well. Really nice touch, which I think are like exclusive to the M2. Very cool M2 seal thing here. That's right, a third pedal. We got some rear seats. And also you guys can get a better look at the carbon seats, all right? You got a little hole there so you can tickle the driver. And then you got rear seats, guys. Unlike my Supra, we got some rear seats. Whether they're usable by adults, I'm not sure yet, but at least there's space to kind of carry stuff if you need the space. Let's take a look at the rear of the car real quick. Probably the most controversial design element of this car. I can assure you that in pictures and videos online, it looks absolutely hideous and everybody agrees that it looked really, really bad. Once you see it in person, it actually looks marginally better, but not great, right? I think a lot of the people that are taking images and videos and posting them online, they're using like their cell phone wide angle lens and it just kind of distorts the design. If you look at it, let's say from this angle, the indentation there is a little bit <laughs> disturbing in a way, but it doesn't look terrible from this angle. The worst angle of the car is when you look at it straight from the rear of the car. That just kind of looks weird because you got like the pointy sections down there and I don't know, it just looks kind of odd. We have this option of, again with the shadow line package. So we got black exhaust tips, black diffuser, and then you got these tail lights, which I think they're pretty identical to like the M240i. The side of the car is definitely the best profile. It looks thick as hell. The wide fender flares, the side skirts that kind of protrude outward gives it that really nice boxy design that people love from the E30 M3, the legendary E30 M3. I think that angle actually looks dope as hell from the side. Get some proper wheels on there, nice suspension to close up the gap. That actually looks very good. As far as the front, I'm lucky that I don't have whatever sensors up front that you normally get with, uh, I don't know, it's like an advanced radar or something like that. So that's not kind of there. As far as this section right here, it's kind of odd because it doesn't have any kind of mesh or anything like that to protect like the radiators, heat exchanger, oil cooler, stuff like that. I mean, there's some kind of a shield on there, but it just looks odd to be fully open. Maybe that's, you know, designed by the BMW engineers that makes sense to them as far as cooling. The Kini grills are definitely smaller. Not as big as the G80 ones, which is nice. Very weird design, but I think it's something that a lot of us are gonna get used to pretty soon. The only thing I'm confused about, it has, it's like a one headlight thing design. Instead of two projectors like most BMWs, this one only has one. So that's something that you get used to real quick. Hood has the indentation up top, All right? Pretty aggressive. And here's what the front looks like. I don't know, what do you guys think? I think it looks pretty decent. If it were me, I would probably paint match the, the bottom part of that bumper to be the same Zenfer blue, or I would add some sort of carbon fiber lip that goes all the way across whenever, you know, companies start offering that. This angle right here doesn't look bad either. Like this front kind of quarter angle, that looks pretty badass. Open up the trunk, not really much to see there. It's just like an ordinary trunk there. Got a little net section right here, a little space right here. And then, yeah, I mean, it's not massive, but there's space for stuff. Before leaving the dealership, they had their BMW Genius give me a tour of all the features, help me with the initial setup, and answered any questions I had. It was a bit overwhelming to be honest, but I'm sure over time it's going to become much simpler for me to use. The new iDrive setup is just simply amazing. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't know how to operate half of the things in this car. Because obviously I own a lot of BMWs, but this is a whole different beast right here, guys. Yeah. This is the guy that we need to thank right here. He made this car happen. So if you guys ever come to war, a BMW Warwick, this is the guy right here, man. I appreciate Thank everything. Thank you, brother. You made it work. It's his day off today too, by the way. You're a good he man. He made it work, so. And now we got one of the very first M2s available in the US. I can totally, totally get used to this, guys. It is so sleek and so modern. By the way, these seats are actually quite comfortable for being bucket seats. You have like this odd kind of crotch carbon fiber thing here like for this leg separators. It's not an issue for me because I don't have like excessive big thighs or anything. 
But if you're like a heavier set person, that might be an issue or maybe a little bit of discomfort. So you might want to go for the regular comfort seats. But for me, these actually feel pretty good. I mean, it's hugging me out pretty well too. Luckily, we do have some adjustment for the seats. I think we don't have that many on like the original comfort ones. I don't know. Anyways, you got some adjustability here. I would have to mess around with it to see what we have. But yeah, this is a dope, dope interior. So dope. All carbon fiber trim area here. You open this up and you got the cup holders. You can see I have two key fobs right there. One of them, one of them is like still freshly wrapped. Gotta conserve that one. Me likey. The first official fill up for them to, you know, we had to go with Shell and V Power. The guys at the BMW dealership would have filled it up for me, but their pump station broke or something like that. So they told me to just go to the nearest gas station. I chose Shell and they would reimburse me whatever the total cost is. So very nice of them to do it. Love the customer service there. They're really taking care of me. Yep, there you go. 11.3 gallons, 49 bucks. $4.40, God, expensive is a lot more expensive here in Rhode Island than Florida, that's for sure. I don't know how many of you guys actually know, but I'm originally from Providence, Rhode Island, lived here 15 years, so my mom actually lives like 10 minutes from here. She's begging me to come over and eat some food before I take the drive to Florida. I don't know if I mentioned that in the earlier video, but yes, I'm driving this car back to Florida. It totally makes sense for me because there's like a 1200 or 1500 mile break-in period, and I'm not gonna make th that happen in Orlando. I don't really drive that much. So I'll drive the car back. it would be like a bonding experience with the G87 M2, but uh, going over to my mom's house, get something to eat, say hi to them, then hit the road. Oh That's God. my mom. <laughs> what do you think of the car? Yeah, you like it? It's pretty. Yeah. Hablame español, entonces. ¿Te gusta? Esa tu... Ella. No, este video para mi YouTube. No te pongas así. Ella tímida. She's nervous. She's shy. You yeah. like it? I like it. I like the color. Yeah, my daughter preferring. Yeah. Yeah? Let me oh show you the inside. Come God. here. Yeah. This is so funny. I've never had my mom on video. Excited. Look at the interior. Oh, oh. Jesus, oh my goodness. <laughs> Ready. <laughs> <Ma. laughs> yeah. Very nice, right? Yeah, very nice. You sounded nice. good? Yeah. Ooh. That's my sister Penelope right there. What do you think of the new car, the M2? It looks very awesome. You like the color? Yo. Open the door so you can see the interior. My favorite part, I gotta show it off. What do you think? Look at that reaction. <laughs> Pretty crazy, huh? Your brother did good? Yup. Yeah. <laughs> it was now time to take the road trip to Orlando, and my biggest fear was rock chips. So not only was I going to drive with a significant distance from the cars ahead of me, but I purchased some painter's tape to apply to the front of the bumper. The coverage wasn't going to be the best, but it has helped me in the past. So I'm about an hour, hour and a half into the drive, and I gotta say, all this technology has been keeping me occupied, which is probably not that safe. It's not a lot of traffic on the road right now. Glad to see that they offer Android Auto as well, not just Apple CarPlay. Take a look at the ambient lighting, which you can see on the dash right there and right there. I did like this coral color, which I'm probably gonna end up swapping out. I think what's really neat is look at the door panels, like the M colors that lit up, they're backlit. Very, very cool. I got all the safety features pretty much enabled. Lane cape assist and all that stuff in case I start to get drowsy, but I'm gonna be very responsible and pull over if I get tired. But there's like a feature that they offer here through the through the infotainment where it will detect if you're driving very odd and it will alert you to stop and take a break. So I turned all of that on and I think I should be all right. It's about a, got about like 17 hours left to drive, which is exactly around 1200 miles for the braking period, so perfect. By the time I get to Orlando, you know, I can have a little bit of fun with the car. Took a three hour nap at a rest area. And I can tell you, uh, taking a nap in the M2 with bucket seats, with these center dividers, a no go. I slept maybe an hour and my back was killing me. So I ended up just dropping the rear seats and half of my body was in the trunk, the other half was in the <laughs> on the rear seat uh, section. And yeah, I slept three hours and I think I'm ready to go. We got like, what, 13 hours left. Let's do it. Well guys, here's the M2, it's still in one piece. Paint peeling everywhere. A lot of it's been able to survive though. But as you can see, the wind, the water, the ceramic on top has made it really difficult to keep the tape on for the entirety of the trip. But from what I can see, it looks like it's been able to stop a lot of the bugs 
from getting on the paint, which is a good thing. I just had such a bad taste with uh, the M5 last time when I transported it with a semi truck. I ended up showing up to Orlando damaged, and I wasn't a fan of that. So, looks pretty good. I've been keeping my distance away from semi trucks and a lot of the big Jeeps with tires that stick out and no mud flaps. We're good to go. All this technology that's just packed with this BMW is just crazy. I was messing around with it, obviously, very cautiously while I'm driving to Orlando and I haven't even got through half of the options. It's so much stuff and it's very cool. I'm a big fan of this display where it just, you have all the features you want on there. Zero tint, so we got a fishbowl look here and you can still see the screen, which is very cool, right? A lot of the older BMWs have some sort of a cover that helps with sun glare. There's literally no sun glare with this one. Very, very minimal and I'm guessing it has like a matte finish to help with that. As far as driving impressions, can't really say much. I've been primarily in six gear, 80 miles an hour the entire way, with the exception of some cities where I've been stuck in traffic, which is like first gear, clutch, first gear, clutch, first gear, clutch. Uh, so maybe I'll leave all my driving impressions once I make it to Orlando, uh, take the car over to BMW to do the braking service or whatever, because I'm definitely gonna hit the 1200 miles. And then we'll really push the car and in the future video, give you guys my actual thoughts. But I could say that the steering feels very, very good. The suspension is definitely rough. I mean, it is an M car. Um, even in its comfort feature, if the road is not ideal, you can feel everything. As far as the shifter, it's not as bad as everybody keeps saying. It's super rubbery, BMW, whatever stuff uh, from like, you know, most of their cars. It actually feels very, very nice. It's kind of notchy. Little, tiny bit rubbery, but not the end of the world. And it actually feels really good. The clutch is very easy to engage as well. I mean, a novice, a person that's never driven a stick shift car, I think can pick this up really, really fast. I'm um, very easily with the right guidance, of course. Six hours and 15 minutes left. I'm gonna try to make that without taking another nap and 431 miles, let's get it. Finally, I made it home in around 19 hours and the first thing I did was take off the painter's tape or whatever was left of it. And I'm super glad to say zero rock chips. Look who we found, Mike. Hey bro, honest opinions only, what's up? Uh, I love the color. Right? It's a color that looks weird online, good. but in person it doesn't look terrible. But the rear? Eh, I know, I can't, get, I can't get used to it yet. It feels unfinished or like weirdly designed. Oh, those seats is hard. Ooh. Ooh. I feel like the interior alone makes it worth it, bro. Yeah, I like it. This actually does look comfortable. It's, it's actually very comfortable, bro. Yeah. Sit. Ah, I don't got the thighs for this, bitch. I know what the oh, seats Oh, this is comfortable. Yes. <laughs> Look who's here. Bro, don't look at the rear first. Look at the rear last. <laughs> Why? I don't like it. You don't like the blue? Everybody likes the blue. I like you baby-ish. There's the front of it. <laughs> it needs a front lip that's paint matched. Why is there a gap here? Like, this could have been like right out here at least, and this can be paint matched. Why is it like sticking out? This is much worse than this, I think. How about the no mesh open look? Everything goes in there. You need a PDC delete. <laughs> <laughs> Kidney grills, I'm okay with. It's what about single projector headlights? That's fine too. And I've seen M240Is and they look fine. They look fine. But they have like a weird cut. This one has the, the Porsche square. Yeah. What if I would have came to the shop with a sunroof? <laughs> And why is there the seatbelt thing on the speaker cover? I have no idea. But that's, by the way, that's a new Armored Kardon 13 speaker sound system. Does it even sound good? It sounds great. I think the chunk spoiler is just way too small for uh, a car yeah, like this. Yeah, this, this, this is not it. This is not <laughs> it. I need some fish line and take it off. I like the black tips versus carbon. I mean the chrome versus tips. Versus the chrome tips? Yeah. But it needs a single exit. Single exit. <laughs> <laughs> what in the f is this? This is a bigger gap than a G80. Very, yeah, well, that's 19s, that's why. We need to cut your springs. Ew, no. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's missing something on the side. Yeah, I'll tell you what it's missing M2 grill, like every M car or that something, exists. Something here? Yeah, but doesn't like every M have a yeah, grill they, there? They have a grill and a side marker. I'm sure that's gonna be an aftermarket add-on watch. Yeah, you gotta cut your fender and then put it on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate the interior as far as the infotainment or the iDrive or cluster. Yeah. It actually looks good to it me. Actually, it looks really good in person. These seats? These seats just, um, yeah, seats are those are it. These are actually a lot more comfortable than I thought they were gonna be. Very, very comfortable. 
Damn, bro, you look like a big baby in there. What the hell? What the hell? Oh, that's hard. Oh, yeah. That's for the baby seat. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's for look the that. baby seat. It goes back. back. Oh! oh! Hey! 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 I'm super excited to jump into a new platform with my very first brand new car. And honestly, I owe it to all the support I've received from all of you guys over the last five years. My goal with this car is to make as much content as possible, modify it, and give you guys some insight regarding my ownership experience. Make sure to like the video as it does help out the channel and don't forget to subscribe so you can follow the entire M2 series. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.